Take two. So there was a bit of playing uh, in the key of E in the styles of uh, Johnny Shines. And there's two parts and the first part is, uh, well, I got some ideas from his version of Sweet Home Chicago. And the second part, uh, the solo, is really what he plays in another song called I Don't Know. That's why I called the song I Don't Know. And I've put some links in the video description below to the original performances and to Johnny Shines in general. And you can also download the tap, there's a link in the video description. And this lesson is mainly about, well, I, I think timing, which is really important in blues and also uh, sound production. And about timing, this song is in, um, in uh, a shuffle rhythm. And in a shuffle rhythm, um, you should regard or consider every beat as a triplet, so triplet, three uh, parts of uh, every beat. But uh, with a shuffle, we usually don't play the second part of the beat. So it's triplet, triplet, triplet. And on the second page of the tab, I wrote out the first measure of the solo with triplets and you see above each uh, beat 1 and A, 2 and A, 3 and A, 4 and A, that's how it's, it's represented. And this uh, measure really um, has all the different kinds of, well, triplets uh, that appear in this song. The first is a real triplet, the second one has two melody notes, the third one only one, only one melody note and two basses. And the fourth beat has only two basses. And I'll play it a couple times over and over again slowly so you can well grasp what it what I mean by all that uh, talking. So three, four. Now, um, about sound production, and well, we're in the style of Johnny Shines, and he has a few very distinct features about his guitar style. First of all, he used only temp and index. No second finger, no ring finger, middle finger, just the two fingers. 
like for example uh, Reverend Gary Davies also plays with just these two fingers. And if you are consistently, consistently doing this, it gives you a sound while you're playing a very distinct character. Uh, for example, African uh, fingerstyle guitarists also use this and there's some very strange music appearing from there. So that's one thing. Then he also plays very close, well, to the fretboard in this region. So not, not here and not here. And that also gives, your, um, gives it a very uh, special flavor, the sound. And then he mutes his bass also and not with resting his hands like here because he's playing over here and he does that well i call it the country blues mute so he plays the strings and then mutes with his hand i'm exaggerating of course it's a very slight movement and you can practice that easily and and rely on your ears to, to check if you're doing it right by playing simple boogie figures Every beat is muted by the hands. And you can have it. Now and then you can uh, add a, a note that really rings true, but the, the muting is done with the, this part of your hand resting on the strings after you picked the open strings. Okay. Um, that was mainly the technical explanation. So uh, let's start and get the tap. We're starting with an introduction, a very typical introduction, which is used by Robert Johnson and countless other guitarists. 12 fret, index, well, pinky on the first string, and we're going down. And then to a B7 chord, which you can bar or like this. And already the muting is beginning. All right, well, once more. Okay, so that was the first four bars. And the shuffle, when I play the basses, I hit more than one string. I even hit the, the, the fourth string and I feel it ringing, feel it vibrating under my finger here. If you have large fingers like Johnny Shines or Lightning Hopkins, for example, they finger their, their E chord with just one finger covering place it between the strings, the fifth and the fourth. For example, they hardly use their pinky, they, they use their third finger to play an E7. And I'm told that Johnny Shines also did that. And when he was in this position, fretting fifth and fourth string on the second fret, to do that, you have a very full sound. But I, I don't just... Uh, lead myself to the first, well, the fifth and the sixth string. All right, so we started with the last beat of the introduction, and I'm muting that uh, melody note as well. And it's a triplet here one, two, three, and hammer. And you can do a trill as well. And you notice that not when I play double basses, it's not, they are not both played in the same force. The first part of every beat is played harder. And there we have a it's an E7 
But the third string, this is an E7, the third finger moves to the first string, second fret. There, that's triple bass there. And then we're going to the A. And I finger that like this with my two fingers on the second fret of the second and the fourth string. And let the pinky do the work. In that case, when I'm playing the bass and although in the tap there's only one bass uh, played, it looks like I'm hitting hard enough. Uh, so I unintentionally play the fourth string second fret as well and it gives you a more fuller sound and it sounds better than, than playing the open strings and, and do uh, the melody playing with your, for example, second and the first finger. But with this, this type of chords, even if the third string rings, uh, it belongs there. It's the seventh of that chord. So. And don't forget to mute there. And that this uh, bend for the third string, first, uh, third fret, first string, he often does that on the second string, like that. So. Now we're back to E there. And here I'm playing the open second string, but when I slide to the fourth fret, I don't want it to ring. So I'm not, I don't want this sound. I'm doing this. This is short and it's simply by tilting my sliding finger a little bit so it mutes and damps the second string from ringing. This is more let's say dramatic than both strings ring at the same time. Triplets here. There's also accidental playing and this happens more if you play just with two fingers because it almost, well, it's not on purpose that I also um, let the second string ring, but it rings definitely a little bit. The B7. Here, seven and eight frets, second, first, and second string. And I, I'm not sure, but he pl plays a lot of these riffs um, with his thumb, and playing melody notes and on the treble strings with your thumb gives also a very special sound. So you can choose to do this with the index and the open, or everything with a thumb. So let's do it one more time and I'm going to play um, the sections where we do, I'm going to play those little uh, places a bit, bit more in repetition so you can practice that. So. Now the next one. And the last one. Now the whole thing once more.
after the turnaround, here in the middle of the, the E chord, we're changing to our B7 by simply keep the second finger on the fifth string, second fret, and add your thumb to the sixth string, second fret, and your other fingers to the uh, fourth string and the third string and the, the third string. So we have. I'm playing tamp 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 index up. So uh, E7 So, the, um, which might seem a bit odd, the transition between the verse and the solo, where I go uh, after the... There's a moment of silence there. I liked it. And because I'm muting the last beat of the 12th measure, and since it's a triplet, it's one, two, three, one, two, three. So there's a little space in between. If you want to fill it up uh, as a variation, for example, you can simply play an open bass after that fifth string, second fret, and I'll do that now. You heard? And one more time without the added bass. So we're bending at the 8th fret 2nd string. And I think this note I, is, I think is the most important note of the song. Because with just one note, he implies that the shuffle is still going on. I think that is a stroke of genius. He could have played simply stayed on the bass here. Would sound also nice, but I really like this. And furthermore, I don't know the song from which I took this solo is with a bass and a drummer. I hope you, you listen to it, it's a good song. So he doesn't have to do that. Bass and drummer are, are taking care of the rhythm, but still he does it. Even when, uh, well, country blues artists like Johnny Shines played with a band, they still remain in, in country blues mode, playing those bass strings. Really like that, okay. And then we have another triplet. Sorry, 7th fret, 5th, 4th, and open. One more time. And here, well he has to do a pinch, and since he's playing with only temp and index, he just drops the bass. The fretted notes of the second and the third beat, they are slightly bent. And for the simple reason, it sounds better, it's bluesier than, than simply third fret. For example, if you, if you listen to uh, sly guitars like uh, Blind Willie Johnson, when he plays in open D tuning, and in open D tuning the first two strings are in the same uh, interval as, as, open tu as uh, standard tuning, with a slight Where's my slides? He plays three and a half frets, not on the fourth fret, but three and a half. And Blind Willie Johnson was blind, as you know, so he could not see uh, where he was placing his fret, uh, his uh, bar, his uh, bottleneck. 
and it's just because it's it's the best sound and that's why also Johnny Shine slightly bends out it's not a full bend of half tone no just a little bit That same strange E7 chord, I think it's E9. Uh, second, third finger on the second fret, first string. All right. And that's a fast move. Third string, fourth, fifth fret to go to the A chord. We're going those two bands in the tap well there's two arrows one arrow should be down it's an up stroke and when I'm up I'm hitting it again and we have a down stroke so it's to the 12th fret first and second string Double bass. And here we slide to the from the second to the fourth fret. And the last time it's second to uh, fourth fret and down to the third fret. Alright, again that. Seven, and I mute that. And then we have a cool lick. I do that with because we we'll go starting from the B seven. I simply move up pinky and third finger to the twelfth fret, first and third string, and that bass is muted. And I when I play a, a bass note and there's nothing happening in the trebles at the same uh, beat, I really accent it. Like here in the 16th measure. And again at the 22nd measure where we start with a cool lick. So 12. And then 9, 7, then change strings. I oh, started to 8, 7, yeah. On the second and the fourth string, open first and third and second frets. So. Uh, variation in triplet, not triplet, and again a triplet. And then we're playing over again and ending with our uh, E9 chord. So that's uh, I think the main thing for uh, I don't know. I hope you like this song. Uh, it's a good practice for your timing and sound production and the muting, so have fun with it. <laughs>